everyone and welcome to day 15 of Makeup Mayhem. Today's video is going to be a hits and misses on the Wet n Wild Fergie collection. So I have um, a little bit of everything from the line. I tried to uh, pick out some products that I didn't already have in my collection when I went shopping in my um, new at the drugstore haul, which I'll have linked down below. I show the newest products that I uh, picked up from the uh, Wet n Wild Fergie collection. So in this video, I'm just gonna give you mini reviews on all the products that I've tried and let you know whether or not it was a hit or a miss. So if you want to see this review and uh, if you want to know what I think about these products, then keep on watching. Okay, first, we're gonna start with the nail polish. I only have one. This is um, in the color Glow Stick. And I'm actually not wearing these this on my nail. I'm wearing this on my toenails. And I really like these nail polishes. Um, they do come with the same uh, brush that the Wet n Wild Mega Last nail polishes come with. It's just that uh, flat, flat brush. So I really like this nail polish. It goes on really smoothly. It looks really nice. And um, I look forward to picking up some more colors from um, the Fergie collection. They do have some really interesting colors. I know there's that, like a gold shimmer one that I really wanted to try. So um, this is a hit. Next we're going to get into the makeup. And I'm just going to go um, in the order that I would apply them on my face. So the first one is the uh, Wet n Wild Fergie BB Cream 8-in-1 Beauty Balm. This does have SPF 15, which is a bonus. My shade is light medium, and I am wearing it today on my face. I think that this uh, Beauty Balm is really good for the summer. It's a plus that it does have SPF, so it's going to give you some protection um, from the sun. This has a really creamy, thick consistency, which I do like. It does give, um, I would, I'd say sheer to me, uh, light coverage. You can build it up a little bit, but I still do need to use some concealer um, to cover up my blemishes. However, I do find that it does give an overall uh, tone correcting effect to your face. So I don't find that I have to wear too much concealer to cover up um, my blemishes when I use this. I think that this um, is a great addition to any of your other BB creams or tinted moisturizers that you have. And I would consider this a hit. I'm really looking forward to using this in the summer months. Next we're going to move on to the uh, mattifying powder. And there's only one. This is in the color pedestal. And this is what it looks like. It does come with a little... Uh, sponge there that I don't use. But um, this is just a translucent powder and if you can tell on my finger right here that's what it looks like. Um, it is very smooth, kind of silicone like. Um, it does have uh, some shimmer in it which you can't really tell in the pan but if you look up close, like really closely, you can tell that there's like Almost, it's a fine line between shimmer and glitter. Um, I wore this not too long ago and took some pictures for the blog, and I noticed that right around my eye area, I saw sparkle. <laughs> and I want to say that I have a love-hate relationship with this uh, powder. I love it because it actually does mattify. I wore this to work a couple times, and I found that my foundation actually lasted longer than it would have had if I uh, did not put this on. So this does mattify. I really do like it for that. But I hate that there is shimmer in here. Um, I hate that I can see it on my face. Um, I do find that when I uh, wear this underneath my eye to set my concealer, it does darken up my under eye area, which I don't like either. Um, and it kind of had like, it wears funny. If you can see like the little dents, it just doesn't really apply very evenly and when you go to swatch it on your finger um, I find it's a little bit powdery and it doesn't like it's kind of hard um, it has that like hard pan that is really hard to get the pigment off anyway um, I'm gonna uh, I don't know whether or not to call this a hit or a miss I really don't um, I'm going to say that this is a eh product, um, if that's even a category. I'm not going to give it a miss because I do like it for the mattifying properties and I will be using it um, while I have it in my collection. 
but I am going to say that it's a miss because I don't like the shimmer and once I use this up I will probably not repurchase it just because like I said I don't like that shimmer thing that it has going on. Next I'm going to talk about um, the two reflect shimmer palettes. I do have three of them. Um, first we'll start off with the Rose Champagne Glow. This is a beautiful highlight color. I, um, I featured this in my top five drugstore highlighters. I will have that uh, video linked down below. It just gives the most gorgeous um, rose finish to your look. That's that there it is right there. Um, it is just, it's really pretty. It's like a rose gold type color and it does give a very beautiful highlight. Next one sticking with the highlighters is the Photobomb um, to Reflect Shimmer Palette. This one is limited edition. It is currently out with the um, newest, I think it's the Summer Collection. And this is so gold and yellow. It is so gorgeous. I have this one on my cheekbones right now. That's what it looks like. Um, I really, really, really like this. If I had this highlighter before I filmed my top five drugstore highlighters, this would definitely be in there. It is just absolutely gorgeous and I love it. The next one is uh, the Carnival in Rio uh, to Reflect Shimmer Palette. Now this one is definitely a lot darker, bronzier, and kind of orange. So I had kind of trouble um, with this one trying to decide how to use it because there is the color right there. It is way too dark and bronzy to be a highlighter. It just, at least on my skin tone, it's not going to fly as a highlighter at all. I tried using it as a bronzer and contour color. It does have shimmer in it and it is reflective so it is really not ideal for a contour color. Um, you can use it as like an all over bronzy color but I find it that it's a little bit too orange for that at least for my taste. What I like using this for is a blush and I actually have it on as a blush right now. Um, it is really pretty. It gives a really pretty bronzy glow. Um, so yeah, so my overall impression of the uh, two Reflect Shimmer palettes, overall they are a hit. Like I said, I really like Photobomb and Rose Champagne Glow. Um, with the Carnival in Rio, after if, if and when I finish this, I probably wouldn't repurchase it because it doesn't really serve the purpose of a highlighter for me like it's intended to be. Um, I do use it as a blush and I find that I already have enough blush colors and I do have other bronzy uh, blushes that I like as well. So I probably wouldn't repurchase this, but like I said, overall the two Reflect Shimmer palettes are a definite hit. Next we're going to talk about eye primers and this one is the Take On The Day Eyeshadow Primer. This was the original one that came out in the Fergie collection. I believe they have one or two others that are more of a shimmer. And this one is in the color For My Primas. And it is just a standard um, skin tone um, eyeshadow primer. And it blends in really well. Um, it, it, it's not tacky, but it's kind of silicone feeling. It feels really nice on the skin. Um, I do find that it wears very well. Um, However, I don't find that it's anything exceptional as far as eyeshadow primers out on the market. Um, I want to say this is another F product. I don't want to give it a miss because it is a good eyeshadow primer, but at the same time, I'm not going to say that it's a definite hit because I do like my Too Faced Shadow Insurance better, and actually that's my all-time favorite primer. So, um, yeah, I will definitely be using this while I have it. I think it's a good primer. Um, if you're looking for a drugstore price primer, I would suggest this one. It is one of the cheaper ones on the market. Uh, but this is, this is an eh. It's an eh. I, I've created a new category. It's hits, misses, and eh. So, um, yeah. That's that. Next, we'll, we're going to talk about... Ooh, let's talk about eyeliners. Uh, these also came out with the newest collection um, that's out right now. I don't know if these are limited edition. It didn't say on the packaging. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. But they are the 
unedged long wearing eye pencils and they do come in six different colors um, I have worn the black and the brown um, I haven't really tested out the other colors yet but from what I can tell they do have very decent stain power power I do have black on in my waterline and my lower lash line um, or my tight line I should say the pigmentation is on point it is very very pigmented and it's very creamy um, they do last quite a bit of time on your tight line and waterline um, I want to say at least five hours or so I also tried smudging uh, the brown one on my upper lash line um, and it does smudge out really well and again it does last now it's not a hundred percent waterproof in my opinion um, if I were to smudge my um, eyeliner it would come off but as far as staying power on the eyes it does have very decent staying power so here are the colors um, the first one is the black and this one is in midnight girl next we have the brown one in space cake next one is the white one in china white then we have the blue one in hyper sky then there's the purple one in Violet Femme and lastly the pink one in X Stacy. So overall I would consider these a hit. Um, they do have some fun colors as well as your basic colors and like I said they're pigmented, they're creamy, they're smooth and they last very well. Next we're going to talk about eyeshadows and I have uh, three of their eyeshadow quints. Um, there are five eyeshadows each in these palettes. Two of them are part of their regular line and one of them is limited edition. The first one is Metropolitan Nights and this is a really pretty it kind of borders on neutral but with a little bit of pop of um, gold and it's very pretty I do like it um, these shadows can be hit and miss some of them are pigmented there's others that are really chalky um, some of them are not pigmented at all they do have a wide variety of different finishes so there's some shimmers there's some mattes um, in each palette which I do like and um, yeah, so I'm gonna, just going to swatch them for you so you can kind of get a feel for what um, the pigmentation has to offer in each palette. So this is the Metropolitan Nights. Um, you have a shimmer, a black with gold shimmer. This one is very pigmented. Um, in the middle you have more of like a, like a grayish black. This one's matte. This is your uh, yellow gold color. It does have shimmer. This one's a pretty highlight color. This is, I would describe, more of a satin. And this one's a little bit chalky. Um, and this one is a really pretty shimmery taupe color. This one's probably uh, the smoothest of them all in the palette. Next palette we have is Duchess Lounge. And this one's more of a purpley um, palette. And these are the colors that are in the palette. So we have a black with like a burgundy shimmer in it. There's a taupey purple, a uh, black with silver glitter in it, or shimmer I should say. Then there's a black with like a purple duochrome, and then a silver. Uh, the, this black here is number one the most pigmented color in the whole palette, um, and it, it's the smoothest as far as application. Um, this silver color is the chalkiest, it does have um, quite a bit of fallout and this purple one is the least pigmented. So like I said, um, the quality of the eyeshadows aren't very consistent. And lastly, we have the limited edition um, shit quad in or a quint in Mixing Metals. This one is the uh, one I'm wearing on my eyes today. I will also have a one brand tutorial link down below of me using all of these products on my face. And these are the colors. So you have a really pretty, like a bronzy taupe, a pretty mint green, a very vibrant uh, bronze copper color, a more, um, I guess more taupey color. <clears throat> this one's a little bit more green as far as the taupey family. This one's definitely more of a true taupe. And then you have a uh, black with a little bit of green um, shimmer in it. 
So I would say that this green taupe color is the smoothest as far as application. Um, and this taupey color is, um, has the most fallout. Overall, I really like these palettes. I would consider them a hit. Um, even though the pigmentation and the texture of the eyeshadows are not very consistent, I do find that I can still get a very pretty look out of any of those palettes, and they are uh, pretty good quality eyeshadows um, for the price. Next, we're going to talk about the cream eyeliner. This is in Little Black Dress, and it is just a black eyeliner. There it is right there. There is also a brown um, eyeliner that comes in the collection, but I tend to go a little bit uh, more towards the black cream liners than um, a brown one. So the cream liner does come with a um, shadow brush or an eyeliner brush. I do find um, that that's really convenient. However, I don't think that this brush is the correct one to use to um, put on your eyeliner on your upper lash line. So. This is kind of like a hit and a miss. It's good that it comes with a brush. You can actually still use this brush for more of like detail work in your inner corner or to smudge out um, shadow or eyeliner underneath your lash line. So this eyeliner I am wearing right now and it is very pigmented. Um, there it is right there. It does glide on very smoothly and I find that it is really comparable to the um, Wet n Wild eyeliner that comes in the regular um, Wet n Wild line that I've actually had uh, quite a few times over and over again. I really do enjoy it. So I would give this a hit. Last um, eye product is the Wet n Wild um, Turn Up the Volume Mascara from the Fergie Collection. Uh, this mascara, I believe, does claim to volumize, and I would actually agree with that. I do have it on right now. Um, it does come with a rubberized brush, and it looks like the bristles on the brush um, are a little bit shorter on this end, and then they get a little bit longer. Uh, there is a little bit of product at the very end when you take the wand out, but I do find that that's the case with any um, mascara so that doesn't really bug me that much. Um, I would give this a hit. I really do like it. I do think that it does give really good volume um, to your lashes and it does make them look really full. Um, it does not clump. I have about uh, three coats on right now and I don't find that it really clumps on itself which is really good. However, I do find that it does flake a little bit so as you're adding uh, more coats to your lashes just be mindful of um, some flaking that you might have on your face. Otherwise, I would give this a hit. Um, I would definitely repurchase it once I run out. And lastly, we're going to talk about lip products. Um, the first one is the Vicious Varnish High, High Shine Lip Stain. I do have two colors. I have a nude color here. This is in the uh, color Giving Realness. And I also have the color Street Queen. So there are the two colors right there. Um, these high shine glosses are really pigmented. However, I do find that um, they don't apply very well. Um, upon first application, they do feel wet on your lips. And like I said, they do have really good pigmentation. However, I find it more with the um, lighter shade than the darker one. The Giving Realness shade, as you build up more layers on your mouth, it actually starts to clump together. Um, and if you like smack your lips together or rub your lips together, it just the color just bunches up on on itself, and it just it does not look cute at all. I don't find that that um, is as much of the case in the darker um, lip stain. I do find this one performs a little bit better. But once the um, stain kind of dries on your lips and the shine goes away, you still have the color, but um, the shine going away actually makes my lips feel a little bit dry. I did wear this color one day before going to work, and I normally apply all of my makeup, including my lip product, before I eat. And after I was finished eating, this color actually was completely gone off my lips. So I don't really know what the staying power of these are, but based on the fact that it came off pretty much right away um, with any type of eating, um, I don't really have a high hopes for this. Um, I'm gonna, this is a miss for me. 
I, I will not be repurchasing any other colors. I just don't think that they uh, perform very well and I don't really like the scent either. It has like a very chemically scent to me and I, I don't like it. So these are a miss. Lastly, we're gonna talk about the lipsticks. Um, these are, let's see, I think these are just called the Wet n Wild uh, Fergie lipsticks. And I have one, two, three, four, five. I have seven colors to show you. Three of them are limited edition. Uh, the three limited edition ones are FOMO, Turn to Up, and Swerve. And I will show you um, which ones they are on my hand here. So when I purchased FOMO, which is the limited edition uh, nude shade, um, when I brought it home, I was like, this one looks really similar to, to other colors from the line, um, Bebop Love and Fergie Daily. And I have actually purposely swatched them all together so you can see the differences. So the first one here is Bebop Love. This is definitely a more brown nude, um, and it is a matte. Next one is Fergie Daily. This one is more of a peachy nude, definitely a lot lighter than uh, Bebop Love. And the one next to that is FOMO. And this is definitely more of a pinky nude, and I find that FOMO actually has um, more of a gloss finish to it than the other two. So FOMO is limited edition. The next one is called Swerve. This is also limited edition. It is a really pretty coral color. Next to that is Turn to Up. This one is also limited edition, and this is a really bright, vivid orange. Uh, down below here, we have uh, Divinely Chilled, which is part of the permanent line. And this is a pretty, like, burgundy color with some shimmer. And then at the very bottom here, we have Penthouse Sweet. This is a bright uh, pink color. And this one is also part of the um, regular line. I find that all of these um, lipsticks are so creamy. Um, they last really well on the lips. The one I have right now is FOMO. And I really like the way that these wear. Um, they don't dry out your lips. However, if you do have dry lips to begin with, they do tend to cling a little bit to your dry patches. So just make sure that you moisturize uh, before you wear these lipsticks. But I think that these lipsticks are a hit. They are so good and I cannot wait to get all of the other colors in the line. Um, yeah, they're definitely one of my favorite lipsticks from the drugstore. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below if there's um, another brand that you guys would like to see a hits and misses on. Um, stay tuned for my final um, makeup mayhem video that's going to be posted in a few days. I do have a, a surprise for you in it. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you all next time. Bye!